People loved by God, good morning. If I haven't met you yet, I'm Pastor Brian. I want to share a word of welcome to you. And those of you tuning in on our live stream, blessed and happy sunny Sunday to each of you. Last Sunday was a really special day for our church. It was Confirmation Sunday. If you got to be here for our 1030 service, to me, our students did outstanding. Both They spoke about their personal faith in God, which I love to see, but also want to say they really spoke comfortably about how comfortable they feel about being a part of our church family. To me, that is a testament to you and to the other adults in their lives who care about them, know them, and have created a space where they are loved and accepted for who they are. So church, I want to say thank you to you. My daughter was a part of this confirmation class. I love to seeing her up there. Did a great job along with all the other kiddos. Came down Monday morning wearing this sweatshirt. It says, confirmed Lutheran, this is most certainly true. (laughs) Yes. That was given to me as a gift. I handed it along to Megan, and she just came down Monday morning ready to wear it. A few things would make me happier than seeing her wear, wear that day. I shared a message in this room on January 28th. And here's where you say, oh, I remember that one. (laughs) Of course you do, yeah. I'll tell you, that message, I received a lot of feedback about that message, so much so that we decided to kind of take the theme of that and really take the month of May and really build off of it, expand upon it, and allow it to give us kind of a whole month, a number of weeks to really talk through it. And the message began with the idea of the power of movie soundtracks. And I gave the example then about the movie Jurassic Park. Can you play in your minds the song to Jurassic Park? It's a soundtrack that plays underneath it. How about this? Remember the movie Rocky? Dun, 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 dun. I won't sing, but I think you know Rocky. And The power of a soundtrack is that it kind of plays underneath at really dramatic points in the movie. And it's incredibly memorable because it kind of plays throughout underneath. And on that day, January 28th, I introduced the idea that you too have a soundtrack in your life. And it kind of plays underneath the whole time. And I'll define soundtrack like this. The soundtrack is what you say to yourself about yourself. Do you talk to yourself? Yes, you do. In fact, think about it this way. I get to talk to you for like 10 or 12 minutes once a week. You talk to yourself all week long, all day long. So rather than me telling you just in this 10 or 12 minute message like kind of what to think, I actually want to invite you to rethink the soundtrack that plays underneath what you say to yourself about yourself. Because the reality is this, thinking about that soundtrack, what you say to yourself about yourself, what percentage of that is positive and what percentage of that is negative? If you're like me and like many, we're really good at identifying ways in which we don't measure up. It's called negative self-talk. And one thing I've tried along with my wife to impress upon our kids is that they are allowed to have feelings, but they're not allowed to say negative things about themselves that aren't true. In fact, this is likely true. You say things to yourself about yourself that you would never say to somebody else. As I was preparing for that January 28th message, I just started to think about the things that I say to myself about myself, and I think, would I ever say that to somebody else? And the resounding answer is, no way. Like, there's things that I allow myself to say to myself that, man, if those words came out of my mouth, spoken to someone else, I'd be like, who are you? Don't talk like that about somebody else. But for whatever reason, we give ourselves permission to say those things to ourselves about ourselves. For example, we say to ourselves, I am not a good parent. I don't think there's anything that inspires more self-doubt in us than our parenting. 
Maybe that's because parenting is really hard. I'm now past the point of parenting young children. Like, I don't cut food anymore. (laughs) As I think back to that era when I did, I would have given myself much more grace than I gave myself at that time because that was a very challenging time. So that's why when we see in this building on a Sunday morning parents with young kids, we should do cartwheels in front of them for them. We should have like a red carpet for them. We should say, would you like hot coffee? Would you like a breakfast treat? Do you want me to run to Starbucks for you? I'll do anything for you because you're here and parenting is really hard and we're really glad that you're here. But there's something about that era where we in that time are so hard on ourselves even to this day. Or how about this? We say, hey, I'm struggling vocationally and it's because of me, I'm a failure. When it comes to our occupation, our role in life, you know, what we do for a living, there's something about that that also inspires a lot of self-doubt. And I've observed that as people have difficult moments in their personal vocation, that creates a lot of self-doubt and drama, even if it has nothing to do with anything we did as a result of it, right? Like sometimes companies make different decisions that have nothing to do with our work performance, but for whatever reason, we internalize it and own it big time. And then finally, another thing we say to ourselves, about ourselves, is that others are better at blank than me. Man, you've heard me say, comparison is the thief of joy. There's nothing that leads to more self-doubt than looking at someone else who's doing it, doing something that we're doing, and letting that be a metric by which we evaluate ourselves. So bottom line, when it comes to our soundtrack, the reality is it's not all good. And you may remember on January 20th, I introduced you to the idea that we almost have two volume knobs that play in our minds at any given time. One knob is those words we say to ourselves about ourselves, that negative self-talk, and sometimes that feel that, like that's at volume seven, eight, or nine. Then the other knob is actually what God says to us about us. And unfortunately, that sometimes lives at a level one or two. So I want to tell you off the bat, my goal for this month is simple. It's to have you turn down the volume on your soundtrack of that negative self-talk and to turn up the volume knob of what God actually says to you about who you are. And what I want to do this morning is let a word from the Lord Jesus himself be the thing that turns it up a little bit for you. It's Luke chapter 12, starting at verse 22. It's about eight or ten verses. Let me read it to you. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. That's Jesus' way of saying to his disciples, listen, I care about you. I know you're going to be given to worry and self-doubt. But here's what I want you to hear. He says, life is more than food and the body more than clothes. And Jesus there is pointing out like tangible earthly things that we tend to worry about. In New Testament times, it was Where's my next meal coming from? And am I going to actually have clothes? Now that may not be a worry or fear that you have as you sit here today, but I'm guessing you have other worldly and earthly concerns that you let weigh on you. Maybe things like your finances, your future, your job, college decisions, conflict that you're a part of. All of that are those earthy, earthly things that Jesus says, hey, I want you to pull back on that for just a bit. And because Jesus is a master teacher, he gives us an example. He says, hey, consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. Ravens. They don't farm They don't have the ability to really store food. Yet think about how God takes care of them and ensures that they have what they need. 
In fact, that's what Jesus says next. He says, and how much more valuable you are than birds. Let me share with you a word from the Lord himself. You are more valuable in the eyes of your creator than those who live and dwell at the animal kingdom. Of course, with two prominent examples. Number one, hero Tobias, loved dearly by God. And second, my cat Marie, loved, special, created perfectly by the Lord himself. But I want to tell you, you have a unique place in the Lord's kingdom. You bear God's image. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. So if God is going to take care of the ravens, how much more is he going to take care of you? Jesus goes on to say, Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? Since you cannot do this little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Quick question, is it true for you that you've had a time in your history where you really worried about something? Like it was the first thing you thought about when you woke up in the morning and it was the last thing you thought about when you went to bed at night. And then you look back and it turned out, why did I worry about that? Because it all shook out just fine. Have you ever had an experience like that? Right? I think we all have. So here's Jesus' way of saying, hey, look at how I've taken care of you in the past. And see how I'm going to take care of you in the future. He gives us another vision. Consider how the lilies grow. They don't labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon, King Solomon, in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the fields, of the grass of the field which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? Another example here, lilies. They're beautiful. And God has so taken care of them. If God's going to do that for them, who have such a brief window in time, think how much he's going to take care of us. And he closes with this. And do not set your heart on what you'll eat or drink. Don't worry about it. For the pagan world runs after all such things. And your father knows. I love that line. Your father knows that you need them. Don't worry about it. Instead, seek first his kingdom, and all these things will be given to you as well. That there at the end is an invitation to focus instead on eternal things, life with God things. All this is a word from the Lord, beautifully. Summed up in this by a pastor friend of mine. I served with him in Minnesota. His name was Ben Griffin. He made this image. I love it. Top, how often what we worry about actually happens. Right? So that one dot is like how often what we worry about actually happens. And why? Because the Lord has it. That word to his disciples in Luke chapter 12, it's a word for us as well. This needs to be our soundtrack. Imagine if it was. Imagine if you turned up the volume on on what the Lord says to you here in Luke 12 and so many other places and said, this is really who I am, the defining attribute of my life. I want to leave you with this. There's a verse in the book of Psalms. It's Psalm 94, verse 19. And it's almost like the Lord wrote this verse for this series. Ready? When doubts filled my mind, your comfort gave me renewed hope and cheer. That is when that volume knob got really loud and what I said to myself was really kind of things that I would never say to somebody else. When that got really loud... Your comfort, your word gave me renewed hope and cheer. So here's what we're going to do. I want to create a mechanism by which you can let God's word be not only what you say to yourself, but also what you share with one another. You may have seen a month or two ago, I asked, hey, does anyone have any records in our church that they want to get rid of? With this activity in mind, I want to invite you as you come forward to receive communion today 
Receive the gift of the Lord. It's his forgiveness. It's what shapes you. It's what declares you to you who you are as a forgiven child of God. Then we have two tables. One over on this side. One over on this side. And you're going to be invited to head over there. We have Sharpie markers. And then we have records. Here's just two examples from the 8 o'clock service. You're going to write with a Sharpie on the record, a soundtrack that you want to share either just for yourself to see or you want other people in our church family to see it. This one says, God intended to make you. Isn't that a better soundtrack than what we say about ourselves sometimes? This is from 8 o'clock. God will always lift you up when you are down. That's a great soundtrack. I didn't know how our 8 o'clock crew would do with it. I was like, are they going to do it or not? They crushed it. All right, so I want to encourage you, think right now, what's a soundtrack that really gets you through tough times? And let this either be to yourself, it could be like for me, or it could be a message that you want to share with other people here in our church family. Then we're going to display these. We'll use our half wall here, so kind of before church and after church, you can go up and see all those messages that help shape a new soundtrack for you. Amen? Amen. So I want to invite you to do that.